In this video, we're going to talk about chain rule, which is used for finding derivatives of composite functions. First of all, what's a composite function? Well, basically, it is a function of another function. Let's take a look at the board. Here we have h of x equal to g of f of x. h of x is a composition of two functions, g and f. f of x is, so to say, enclosed into the g function. And it may be said that f of x is the inside function and g is the outside one. As you may remember from our previous videos, any function is a law of correspondence between two sets of coordinates. Well, a composite function is a law just like that, only it contains more than one instruction to be performed. Let's take another look at the board, and here we have an example. h of x equals sine of 2x plus 3. This is a composition of functions, and it contains two operations to be performed. First of them is to take x multiplied by 2 and then at 3. And the second is to take the obtained result and find sine of that value. Now back to chain rule. It states that if we are dealing with a composition of functions, we can find its derivative by the following formula. h prime of x equals g prime of f of x times f prime of x. Let's discuss what's what in this formula. So h of x is a composition of two functions, g and f. f of x is the inside function and g is the outside function. Derivative of this function equals derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function multiplied by derivative of the inside function. So one more time. h of x is a composite function. It contains two functions, g and f. f is the inside function and g is the outside one. Derivative of this function equals derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function multiplied by derivative of the inside function. Now let's take another look at this example. We can't, can't find its derivative right away using the rule of derivatives for standard functions as it is a composite function. But we can find its derivative using chain rule. And the first step on that path would be to figure out exactly what function is the inside one and what is the outside one. And there's quite a simple idea how not to get confused in that. You should imagine that you want to evaluate this given expression at a certain point using calculator. You can pick any value you want, particular value doesn't matter. So I suggest that we do so. And um, I say x equals 1, although I could have picked any other value. And then I'll pretend I want to evaluate this expression at this point. So h of 1 equals sine of 2 times 1 plus 3. So obviously what I'm going to do first is take this 1, multiply it by 2, and then at 3. So I'll have 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 3, which is 5. And so I'll obtain sine of 5. And then secondly, I'll evaluate this sine thing. So this polynomial I have in the brackets is the inside function, and sine is the outside function. Now, as we have that clear, we can use chain rule to find its derivative. So according to the formula, I know h prime of x equals cosine of 2x plus 3. So I take derivative of the outside function and evaluate it at the inside function. And then I multiply it by derivative of the inside function, which is simply 2. So the answer to that would be 2 times cosine of 2x plus 3. Consider the case when exactly one function was the inside function and one was the outside function. But what if we needed to calculate a derivative of, say, e taken to the power of cosine of ln of x? Obviously, this, this is no longer the case of composition of two functions. But that doesn't mean we can't use chain rule to find its derivative. On the contrary, we can. And 
The basic idea to start with is pretty much the same. So we arbitrarily pick value for x and pretend that we want to calculate this given expression at this certain point. So obviously the first thing we're going to calculate here will be this logarithm and the next in line will be the cosine and the last one will be this exponential. In general, if we're dealing with the composition of n functions, and I'll have it written down in a moment, so h of x equals f sub n of f sub n minus 1 of f sub n minus 2 and so on of f sub 1 of x its derivative is found as follows f prime sub n of f sub n minus 1 of f sub n minus 2 of f sub n minus 3 and so on of f sub 1 of x multiplied by f sub n minus 1 prime evaluated at f sub n minus 2 of f sub n minus 3 and so on of f sub 1 of x and we'll continue moving further inside until we reach this final f sub 1 of x function and so this the so the last factor will be f sub 1 of x or if we consider the case of composition of three functions so if our h of x function equals y of g of f of x. Its derivative is equal to y prime of g of f of x multiplied by g prime of f of x multiplied by f prime of x. Now let's get back to our example. And we should not forget 
to substitute expressions for g and f. So what we have is e taken to the power of cosine of ln of x times negative sine of ln of x times 1 over x.